Good morning, welcome to St. Thomas the Apostle Church as we celebrate the fourth Sunday of the Easter season. Thank you for the gift of your presence. We thank those who are also joining us online. Um, thank you as well for following our protocols by wearing your mask, striving to keep the social distancing. Looks like things may change here pretty soon on that since we're doing so well as a state, getting our vaccinations and and the rates are much lower, so we're going to be, 
I think the bishop's bringing in some changes here pretty soon on that, hopefully bringing things up a bit, but not yet today. So thank you for following the protocols. You've been outstanding so far, at least most of you, okay? Uh, I invite you to please stand and face the back of the church. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. The Lord be with you. My brothers and sisters, in this Easter season, when we celebrate Christ's victory over death through his glorious resurrection, we also celebrate the newness of life we share in union with him by the sacrament of our baptism. This morning, let us pray in thanksgiving for the gift of these waters, which were blessed at the great Easter vigil which soon will be sprinkled upon us as a memorial of our baptism. Lord our God, in your mercy be present to your people's prayers and for us who recall the wondrous work of our creation and the still greater work of our redemption, graciously bless us with this sacred water. For you created water to make the fields fruitful and to refresh and cleanse our bodies. You also made water the instrument of your mercy, for through it you freed your people from slavery and quenched their thirst in the desert. Through water the prophets proclaimed the new covenant you were to enter upon with the human race. And last of all, through water, which Christ made holy in the river Jordan, you have renewed our nature in the bath of regeneration. Therefore, may this water be for us a memorial of the baptism we have received, and grant that we may share in the gladness of our brothers and sisters who at Easter have received their baptism. We ask this through Christ our Lord. And may Almighty God cleanse us of our sins, and through the celebration of the Eucharist, make us worthy to share at the table of his kingdom. Thank you. 
Almighty, ever-living God, lead us to a share in the joys of heaven, so that the humble flock may reach where the brave shepherd has gone before, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Peter filled, but the Holy Spirit said, Leaders of the people and elders, if we are being examined today about a good deed done to a cripple, namely by what means he was saved, then all of you and all the people of Israel should know that it was in the name of Jesus Christ, the Nazarene, whom you crucified, whom God raised from the dead. In his name, this man stands before you healed. He is the stone rejected by you, the builders, which has become the cornerstone. There is no salvation through anyone else, nor is there any other name under heaven given to the human race by which we are to be saved. The word of the Lord. by the builders has become the cornerstone. The stone rejected by the builders has become the cornerstone. Give thanks to the Lord for he is good for his mercy endures forever. It is better to take refuge in the Lord than to trust in man. It is better to take refuge in the Lord than to trust in princes. The stone rejected by the builders has become the cornerstone. I will give thanks to you, for you have answered me and have been my Savior. The stone which the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. By the Lord has this been done. It is wonderful in our eyes. The stone rejected by the builders has become the cornerstone. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. We bless you from the house of the Lord. I will give thanks to you for you have answered me and have been my Savior. 
give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, for his kindness endures forever. The stone rejected by the builders has become the A reading from the first letter of St. John. Beloved, see what love the Father has bestowed on us that we may be called the children of God. Yet, so we are. The reason the world does not know us is that it did not know Him. Beloved, we are God's children now, What we shall be has not yet been revealed. We do know that when it is revealed, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. The word of the Lord. shepherd says the Lord I know my sheep and mine know me the Lord be with you a reading from the Holy Gospel according to John Jesus said, I am the good shepherd. A good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. A hired man who is not a shepherd and whose sheep are not his own sees a wolf coming and leaves the sheep and runs away. And the wolf catches and scatters them. This is because he works for pay and has no concern for the sheep. I am the good shepherd, and I know mine, and mine know me. Just as the Father knows me, and I know the Father. And I will lay down my life for the sheep. I have other sheep that do not belong to this fold. These also I must lead, and they will hear my voice, and there will be one flock, one shepherd. This is why the Father loves me, because I lay down my life in order to take it up again. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down on my own. I have power to lay it down and power to take it up again. This command I have received from my Father. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Psalm 23, the 23rd Psalm, is no doubt probably the most loved psalm of all 150. When I meet with families that aren't too connected with the church for a funeral, A psalm they'll often select is Psalm 23, because they know that. And of course, 
Most people would know that the psalm begins with, The Lord is my shepherd. And most people automatically um, kick in to thinking of today's gospel, and they interpret that psalm in light of the gospel today when Jesus says, I am the good shepherd. But a good Jew would have approached it very differently. Um, the first word of Psalm 23 is the Lord, or Yahweh. And the first word of the psalm is the unique name of the God of Israel, the God of creation, the one who liberates, who heals, who commands. And then the psalmist says, of this God, Yahweh is my shepherd. Three words that say a whole lot. Often we think of the term shepherd in this psalm, we think of a peaceful, ideal pastoral shepherd. And in fact, the term shepherd is, you know, in the, in the Bible is a rather political term. It means king, sovereign, lord, authority, the one who directs, the one to whom I am answerable, the one that I serve. So in this simple opening line of Psalm 23, it's very clear about the goal and focus, the center and purpose of life. And it is this, that Yahweh is the Lord and there is no other. There is no rival loyalty, no competing claim, not our own desires, our desire for pleasure, security, fame, nor the approval of others. <clears throat> Nothing is more important because God is my shepherd. And then this psalmist comes to this stunning conclusion. And he says, I shall not want. You know what that means? I shall not lack anything. I shall not have other yearnings or desires that fall outside of the gifts of God. What God gives will be sufficient. You know, this is a statement that expresses an enormous level of trust and confidence in the generosity of our God. The one who knows what we need and gives well beyond what we ask or think. So as we put our trust in God who will provide for us, the phrase, I shall not want, is clearly a decision against greed, envy, lust, you know, which is often an, an aggressive ambition of a consumer-driven society. You know, so often we carry a consumer mentality because of the culture that we live within, and it's often driven by the marketing of corporations trying to tell us, and often we buy into it, that we always must have one more thing, that we're entitled to this thing or that, and we must have it no matter what. Well, the last thing the marketing agencies want to hear from you is, God is my shepherd, I shall not want. Because they tap in to that desire that we have within us for purpose and meaning that can only be fulfilled by God. They try to tap into that. But St. Peter clearly tells us in our first reading from the Acts of the Apostles, he said, he, meaning Jesus Christ, is the stone rejected by you, the builders, which has become the cornerstone. There is no salvation through anyone else nor is there any other name under heaven given to the human race by which we are to be saved. So we will find our salvation only in Christ, in God, because Yahweh is our shepherd, and he wants to be the Lord of our wants and needs. And we need much less 
in our lives when we are clear of the awesome nature and the goodness of God, when God is our shepherd. No substitutes for the Lord are allowed or required because the Lord is enough. We must cast our lots totally with him, with his son, who is the perfect reflection of the Father. So when the power and purpose of the Lord is the foundation of our life's journey, it changes everything. It changes the circumstances in which we live. And we quickly can find that we can live with less. That the wilderness can become our home. That isolation can become companionship. And scarcity, we can see generosity. This is the life of faith. This is the life of trusting God, allowing God to be our shepherd. It's very different from the life that is not centered in Yahweh, the, the good shepherd, Jesus Christ. So this Easter season, you and I are invited you know, through the scriptures, to step out in faith with Thomas and with all the apostles. We're being invited to truly make the Lord our shepherd. To see past our anxieties, our greed, our fear, our need to control. And to see ourselves as sheep of the good shepherd as travelers in the valley of the Lord, as citizens of God's house. So we are invited to desire one thing, and that's to live in God, allowing God to be our shepherd. And when we do, we will be less driven by the false values and the false desires that dominate much of our society. And instead, we will be led by the wisdom of God's Son, Jesus, through life. And when we can surrender to the Good Shepherd, we will find our lives um, much more at peace. And it truly is a peace that only God can give. Together, God's people, I invite you now to please stand as we profess our common faith by praying the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there, he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Knowing that we are loved and sustained by Jesus, the Good Shepherd, let us now entrust our needs to his gracious care. For the Church, may we distinguish the voice of the Good Shepherd from all the other messages we hear and faithfully respond to Christ's invitations. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the world. May leaders of nations model a respect and reverence for all life, from conception to natural death. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those in our parish family who receive the sacraments of confirmation and first communion this weekend, may they be strengthened by the Holy Spirit to lead others to Jesus Christ. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the diocesan synod on family, May we help each other grow in Christ and give witness of God's faithfulness in our words and deeds. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For an end to violence, 
May the Good Shepherd protect all of God's children from random shootings, domestic violence, hate crimes, and acts of terrorism. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the sick, may the sacrament of anointing in our community's compassion bring them healing and strength, especially Vern Boyer, Paul Lacey, Daryl Ann Jorgensen, and Nick Gomez. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the dead, especially Mac Cole. May all the departed who were God's children by baptism become like God in eternal life. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the intentions of the St. Thomas the Apostle Parish family for whom this Mass is offered, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. O oh God, what love you have bestowed on us that we should be called your children, born again in Christ by water and the Spirit. Keep us safe, make us one, and gather all your scattered children into the one fold of the one shepherd whose life is given freely for us. And we ask this through Christ our Lord. <clears throat> Our preparation song is Christ the Good Shepherd. we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and the work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice in your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and for the all of the children. Grant, we pray, O Lord, that we may always find delight in these Paschal mysteries, so that the renewal constantly at work within us may be the cause of our unending joy. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but in this time, above all, to laud you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For with the old order destroyed, a universe cast down is renewed, and integrity of life is restored to us in Christ. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic host sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. 
You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and the working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered in your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples saying, take this all of you and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, when we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven. And as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you willed to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we, who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. Thomas, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth. With your servant Francis, our Pope, and Michael, our Bishop, the Order of Bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you, in your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and
at the Savior's command and form by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom and power and glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace, I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Our communion song is Taste and See.
Let us pray. Look upon your flock, kind shepherd, and be pleased to settle in eternal pastures the sheep you have redeemed by the precious blood of your Son, who lives and reigns forever and ever. We do have a few announcements. Some. Once again, congratulations to the 34 wonderful students who received their confirmation and their first Holy Communion yesterday morning. Bishop Orfell was here to celebrate with them. And a special thanks to Joyce Hollowell in getting them prepared so well, especially during these challenging times of the pandemic. Her and our catechist, as well as the parents, did a great job in their preparation of the students. So um, it, it was a fantastic celebration. So a special thanks to all who made that happen. <laughs> Our annual kite flying family night was a great success. Um, we probably had like 100, 125 people there. A number of kites were in the air. And it's so fun to see the kids, especially the little ones, um, fly a kite for the first time with the help of their dad or mom or grandparents, and they enjoyed it. But again, special thanks to those who made that happen. Um, Karen Scher supports, of course, critical ministries of our wider diocese, and our assessment this year is $177,066. So far, we've, we've received 122000 433 for the parish, so we're at 69% of our goal. So that's pretty good. So thank you to those who contributed thus far to Karen Chair, and thank you to those who haven't yet, because I know you will step up so we can reach our goal, okay? Um, hopefully we can get it reached by the end of June, okay? So special thanks to all of you for that. Also, Matt Cole, our, our parishioner, Mac and Judy have been parishioners 
um, they moved here from Hysham, and Judy was one of the first we buried who died from uh, the impact of COVID-19. And we buried her in July, and Mac died this past Tuesday. His funeral is here tomorrow at 10 o'clock. So keep the family in your prayers as well. And I believe that's it. <coughs> Enjoy the nice weather while we have it, and then it's going to cool off a bit. And then Wednesday, maybe Thursday, we'll be in the 70s. That's what my meteorologist told me last night. So hopefully he's right. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go and announce the gospel of the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Alleluia, alleluia. As we go forth, let us sing, Rise Up With Him.